This is an intro to animation in Adobe Animate CC. It is going to be slightly fast paced. If you are completely new to animation or the Adobe interface or need some more step-by-step -step information, I would highly recommend lynda.com and my students know that they can access it with a library card through the Poudre River Library District. But for those of you who are game for some good times, I will show you some fundamentals about animation in anime. Okay, for starters, uh, what I did was uh, I made sure to go to Window, Workspaces, Animator for this particular exercise. Uh, that gets all the information I need up. My toolbar is available. My timeline, which I'm going to be referencing quite a bit, is at the top. Uh, my color swatches are on the left. I can do a line. I can do different scenes. We're going to do some basic uh, animation right now. Just a heads up, I drew this uh, image in uh, Adobe Animate. And I'm just going to show you some of the ways that I achieved this image. Square, I, I only want to fill, I don't want to stroke. When I go to Window Workspace Animator and it brings up this color window for me, I see here a pencil that is my stroke color and a paint bucket that's my fill color. I'm going to click on my pencil tool and then right underneath it is a box with a red line through it saying no color. I'm going to click on that because I don't want a um, stroke around this background but I am going to choose a fill color uh, for this moment. Now, I am going to take this blue, uh, but you may notice that in my background, I have a gradient. So what I'm gonna do in um, Animate is instead of a solid color, in the drop down, I'm gonna choose linear gradient. So that was, I've highlighted my paint bucket, I picked a temporary color, instead of solid color, I chose linear gradient. And now at the bottom here, I can pick whatever color I might like. So I'm going to select um, this greenish blue, and then I'm going to double click on this little square with an arrow on top to pick a light yellow. And there's a gradient in between there. If I want more colors in between, I just click in there anywhere in between. If I don't want these, I just click and drag them away. And maybe I want to go to a different color yellow and then slowly transition out. Now I've picked my colors through my color picker. I can also go to this color wheel um, and this color picker also allows me to scrub through and pick more than what is offered uh, in the 256 web colors that are offered here. Cool, that's great. Let me go ahead and um, by the way, I just hit escape because I didn't want that color picker at that moment. Now that I have a gradient, uh, I'm going to go back to this tool here, which is the rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw myself a rectangle. Great. The rest of the tools are ones that are advanced or we won't be using necessarily. For animation, especially the animation we're doing, we're going to use selection tools, the transform tool, maybe the pen tool, the drawing tools, our friend is the brush tool. That's the one we'll be using the most. Okay, so I have this gradient here. One issue is I would like this to be the horizon line. I don't want it to be linear in a vertical way. Well, uh, Adobe Animate has a way to manipulate gradients uh, or transform them, if you will. And so uh, what I can do is underneath the free transform tool is the gradient transform tool. And I get a couple of options. One is I can actually, maybe I want more of a certain color. I can modify it here so that as I pull on the center point, I'm getting more of that blue-green. I can also compress it or expand it. Maybe I want to expand a little bit. But what I care the most about is rotating this. Um, I don't want it to be, um, I want it to, it to be where the blue-green is the horizontal line. You notice as I roll over this white dot, I get a change in the cursor um, that lets me know that I can rotate this. I'm gonna hold my shift key down, which allows me to snap that to snap in. Great. Now I can select anywhere else and I have my gradient 
right here. Uh, great, so again, that was the gradient transform tool found under the free transform tool. The other thing that I did was I used my brush tool. Uh, I'm first, I want to make sure I don't have anything selected. And I went to my brush tool. It might be easier, once I select my brush tool, to use these contextually sensitive options. Watch what happens here as I select other tools. I'll get different choices for each one. Now I want my brush tool, and here I can choose um, brush type, which will be round. Uh, I can use brush size. Um, and then we can do paint normal, paint fills, paint behind, paint selection. We're not going to need any of this right now. Now when I go to paint my clouds, it looks great. Um, we also have a pencil tool here. The pencil tools, one thing I really like about the pencil tool, especially if you have a Wacom tablet, is you can select the pencil tool and then you get this option of pencil mode, straighten smooth ink. Let me show you what straighten does. As long as I have this straighten on, uh, it will fix that for me, right? By the same token, if I have a smooth, it's going to straighten that up for me, make it nicer and smoother. And then I can go to ink, and then it lets me be really specific. Whatever I draw, it will stay like that. I'm going to do Command Z, and I'm going to also show you, in addition to this pencil tool, the brush tool, there is the pen tool. The pen tool has some interesting attributes. Um, it also behaves like the stroke, so whatever color you have for your stroke will pick up with a pen tool. Um, and uh, the other super cool thing about the um, pen tool, and this is new in Adobe Animate, is that you can go to a brush library and then modify your brush with, let's say I would like my brush to look like this. What is the one I select this and go to draw? I'm going to deselect my brush library and I'm going to deselect my black line. It's now my brush picked up that um, charcoal style that I selected in my brush library. Also, heads up if you have brushes shared on your Adobe CC library, you can use those in uh, Adobe Animate with the pen tool which uses brushes. Now, the brush tool funnily enough, and the pencil tool don't have the same access to the brush library as the pen tool does. Maybe this is incorrect information, but I don't think so. I experimented with it quite a bit, um, which is fine. I have long loved the brush tool and the pencil tool in uh, uh, Animate and anim before Animate Flash, so it doesn't bother me a bit. Anyway, I used those tools to create the scene here. And in my scene, I have um, this gradient background, these clouds that I drew with my brush tool. Then I used my pen tool to get some slightly pink strokes. And then just using my brush tool, I drew this ghostly lady. So far, so good. Uh, again, I'm in this window workspace animator. I have my timeline at the top. Right now the timeline is acting just like a Photoshop layer, uh, layers palette. For instance, I can lock my layers, I can turn each one off. Uh, by the way, it looks like I have, oh yeah, great. Uh, the only difference is my timeline also runs by frames horizontally here. So I'm going to take these objects and then animate them. Right now, my, um, my document is running 24 frames per second. Uh, I would like to change that. And just so you know, when I first started uh, and made a new file in Animate, I went to Modify Document and then got these document settings. The document settings allowed me to choose the width and the height of my document. Uh, and I'm going to talk about this other stuff later. But here I'm going to go ahead and make it 12 frames per second. And hit OK. Uh, it will just be a smoother transition and I'll need less frame by frames if it's 12 frames per second. Cool. Okay, I would like to start by animating um, this lady. I'm just going to have her sort of float across the stage for the moment. Um, right now if I click on her 
and I'm going to zoom in um, so that you can see. But if I click on her layer, the, I can tell that I've highlighted it because I get this dotted texture, right? And I just drew it with my brush tool, um, some lighter colors, darker colors. The only problem is I don't want to animate her in this sort of raw state. She needs to be contained in a way. Um, Otherwise, the computer doesn't know which part of her to animate first, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to, after highlighting her, and, and because she's kind of a complicated drawing, I highlighted her by clicking on this keyframe here, uh, this top keyframe that she exists in. And I'm going to go to Modify, Convert to Symbol. And I get this Convert to Symbol, and basically I'm... I'm packaging her up in a way that allows Animate to um, process her and animate her, do whatever, whatever I might like. The main thing is when I convert her to a symbol, I need it to be a movie clip. For today's exercise, we're only going to stick with movie clips. I am going to give her a name, Scary Lady, and I'm going to leave the rest uh, like that. I'll hit OK. The first thing we notice is she's no longer dotted, and instead she's surrounded by a blue line. Woo! Right there. That's exactly what I want, because I want to let Animate know that I would like her to uh, be able to be tweened across my stage. So on her layer, I only have one frame. If I were to play this, there's no, it couldn't play. There's just, it's only one frame long, there's no content. What I am going to do is go out into my timeline and I'm going to add frames so that she can be tweened. Uh, to do that, I need to go to Insert, Timeline, Frame. So I'm just going to add a frame out in the timeline. Great. Now one of the things that happened when I did that was I lost all of my background content. I lost my clouds and my sky. And of course I did. Look, this is only one frame long. This is only one frame long. It doesn't go all the way out here. So I need to do for my sky layer. I also need to go insert timeline frame. And for the background layer, I need to go, whoops, insert timeline frame. Now all that content got carried out with Scary Lady. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click um, on the first keyframe of the scary lady layer and I'm going to go to insert motion tween and that highlights this whole layer blue. Now what I can do is I can go out in my timeline and I can move my lady and what I notice is there's a little tiny black dot. That little black dot lets me know that the computer is going to animate in between the first keyframe that I showed you, which is this little black dot, and the subsequent keyframes. Just a heads up, a keyframe comes from traditional animation where the main animator like Chuck Jones would come in and he would say, I want Bugs Bunny to start looking like this and then he will end up like this. He'll start looking like keyframe A and then he'll end up looking like keyframe B. And then a bunch of artists would painstakingly animate cell by cell in between the two positions. Uh, those animators were called in-betweeners uh, and now when the computer does it for us, we call it a tween. The nice thing about this is that, whoops, I'm going to lock these under layers. The nice thing is about each of these is that uh, I have the ability to really shape the path of travel, meaning that I can manipulate this so that um, her ride across the stage is smooth. Uh, and now what I'll do is I'll hit return on my keyboard and I can see her floating along. Now it's actually a little bit fast for my taste so I'm going to change the speed 
in between keyframes, say, uh, 16 and 26. It's too fast, this little dip. How do I know? Students often ask, how, how long should it take to animate in between A and B? You know because you look at it and you watch it and you make sure it looks good. In this case, uh, to slow it down, I'd need to add more frames in between these two. To add frames in between uh, my two frames here, I can go to Insert Timeline Frame, but there's a keyboard shortcut F5. So what I would like to do is actually highlight not just the Scary Lady layer, but hold down Shift and select the Sky layer and the background layer. And now I'm going to go F5 and add multiple frames in between. That way I still have my background and my clouds and I'm going to hit return. Okay, yeah, that's cool. It could use some help, but that's okay. Uh, maybe I'm going to add some frames here and then I will uh, zoom out on my timeline so I can see more of what's happening. I'm going to select using my um, shift key. Great. Great. Now when I hit return. Now those dotted lines will not stay there. They're, they're just there to help me animate her. Great. Perfect. Uh, in the backgrounds, 